Ah, the themes of Halloween. Spooky, scary skeletons, black cats, grinning jack-o'-lanterns, and of course, the haunted house. Be it real or imagined, who doesn't love a haunted house? I certainly do. And when my neighbor told me about the haunted barn over on Middle Street, knowing that I love things scary, I couldn't wait to check it out. And it met all of my expectations, from creepy, dark corners that were rather foreboding, to things jumping out at you, to the scary cemetery in the backyard. I was hooked and I decided to go back year after year. In fact, August, September, I'd be driving by just to see what that theme was that year. That's how excited I was. And of course, I found myself going back to experience a different story every time. Like the seven deadly sins. Did you see how captivating it was that year? I still haven't forgotten it. And of course, who could forget? the scary fairy tale theme. Did you see that Snow White? That was someone to remember. So of course, I soon found that everybody was going to the haunted barn, not only for the theme every year, but of course to see Fluffy. Fluffy was quite the character. First time I met Fluffy, I jumped right out of my skin. So year after year, I found myself at the haunted barn, just walking through, waiting for the next thing to jump out at me. And of course, this year just found out that last year was the last time for The Haunted Barn. So today, on A Scary Good Time, we're going to introduce you to the people behind the scenes. Diana Kirkpatrick, her daughter Rachel, and we're going to see what it really took to put this together. All of the props, where do they hide all year long? Where do they reside? In other dark, scary corners. And of course, we're going to give you the response from the community how this haunted barn made an impact on the folks here on the seacoast, how it became an annual ritual for people here to bring their families to go and experience that scary good time. So sit back with us as we go behind the scary scenes of the haunted barn over on Middle Road. I'm sure it'll be a scary good time for all of us. So we started on a porch. We used to live on um, Miller Avenue in Portsmouth. And we, one Halloween, she found a makeshift homemade kind of coffin on at Todd Farm. And we set up a little scene, just a really like Dracula and a coffin and a little buffet with a brain mold. And I, I dressed up as a devil with a full mask on and sat in a rocking chair and didn't move until people came up to the porch up the stairs and uh, scared a lot of people. And they, there was a lot of screams and people falling down the stairs and she thought it was fantastic. I thought, this is great fun, we should do this. <laughs> so we just kept doing the porch and then we moved over here and then we had the barn. And so things started to, I just thought what fun it would be if we could turn this into, you know, a Halloween thing. Cause we didn't have any trick-or-treaters. My neighbors all said, no one ever trick-or-treats here, so I don't know why you're doing this, you know. We were kind of on a main road where it didn't seem like a neighborhood. So I thought, if I create this thing, they'll come. And sure enough, that's what happened. Started out just trying to be local, you know, didn't advertise, didn't do anything like that. It was just, it was just for neighbors and kids and stuff like that. But then it's my daughter and I, have continued to just sort of grow this thing out for fun. There was no other reason behind it. The 
I didn't want to just have things that came from party stores and what kids had already seen. The idea was to create uh, a theme every year and a magic sort of environment so that they could like, you know, go into their own worlds about where they are and what they are. And the thing about it's like you do it like um, installation art. You do it like sight, sound, sometimes even smells that you can add to things that create this emotional response. And I, I like doing that. And so we just kept growing it. And then every year, Rachel and I would sit down and talk about like, you know, what do you think we ought to, what, what, what would be the theme for next year? You know, what would be kind of fun? And we didn't ever really want to go to uh, movies and things like that. Like we're trying to create something different than that. Just themes, ideas. Um, we just kind of sit around and come up with ideas. It's as, as the time has gone on. It used to be when we first started, it would just be this room was this scene and this room was this scene and it just kind of didn't tie and we started tying it together. Um, and so we'd come up with a general theme and then we'd make, we kind of go in and make each individual room and figure out what we're going to do as far as, you know, how it's going to flow. And uh, But yeah, you know, like we used fairy tales one year, just things that aren't maybe necessarily creepy, but we can make them a little creepy or a lot creepy. Maybe they're a little creepy, but we can make them a lot creepy. Seven Deadly Sins was amazing. Amazing. Um, Envy and we had Gluttony, which was great. Um, you know, and we all, we have like our favorite characters and our favorite masks that we always are, you know. So one of mom's favorites is the, we have a nurse. She usually plays a nurse, this mannequin. <laughs> they have their own personalities. <laughs> And it's this mask of this woman with these big cheeks and she, you know, we usually put blonde braids on her and she's just outrageous, but she's fun. Um, so she loves her. And yeah, I mean, there's Fluffy. Everyone loves Fluffy. Fluffy's like infamous. It just evolved, you know, it was one of those things. When I was in graduate school, I came out of graduate school, went in as a painter, came out as an installation artist. So I think as that sort of, plays into it a little bit too and I like being able to walk away from the work that I do every day in my studio to something hands-on something I feel like I can actually create this thing and hold it and I, I like that because the whole the pictures come when the theme comes the pictures in my head start showing up as like this is what I think we ought to do here and we start dividing the rooms it just evolves it's funny because it's been over the it's morphed so much into this just like community event that we every year people look forward to we look forward to it um and yeah it's like i can't her not doing it this year is great for her because it takes up so much of her time and she's creative and she's an artist and she's an amazing artist but at the same time, it's a lot of work for her. And she primarily does it on her own now. Mm -hmm. um, we initially, for many years, had the help of uh, John Pendergast and Carol Woodman from Jumbo Circus Peanuts. And they would help us, they'd come over and help do things that we couldn't do and lift things and lug stuff around. And every year for years, they will come and break it down for us, uh, which is a great help, and put it all in the barn and close the doors. Um, but yeah, it was. It's a lot, so it's a blessing and a curse, really. But it feels like you're losing part of your family. And every day, every weekend I go home, still I live in Rhode Island, and every weekend I go home and we're talking about doing decorations and maybe we'll just do the front porch and then what happens is we come up with all these ideas that basically bring the barn to the front porch. <laughs> so it's kind of like, tone it down. <laughs> Sometimes um, Rachel and I, one of the most fun uh, things we did was we would look out the kitchen window and where the guest book is situated in the barn, we used a laser from the kitchen window onto the guest book 
And so we would be moving it around everywhere while these people are trying to write their names. And they were like, so confused about where this light was coming from. And the kids would be like jumping up and down because they would think there was some kind of a mat or something that was creating it, you know. And we just had a wonderful time doing that. Like I had, I had as much fun or more probably than the people who come here. <laughs> It's sort of always been tradition that we open it the first weekend in October. Uh, we usually start working on it in June, roughly. We'll pull everything out and kind of go over things and clean things up and figure out what we're going to do. And, uh, but we always open on the first weekend in October. And we would, on trick-or-treat night, we would always just open it. And then on our trick-or-treat night, we'll come out and be dressed up as characters. And that's when we get to really like scare people. So there's been a lot of great scares. There's been, um, like we have some favorites that we talk about. We had a funeral room at one point in the first room and there were two pews and mannequins sitting on the pews. And my mother was in one fairly early in the evening on trick or treat night and the police had come because they come in direct traffic sometimes because there's so many cars and trick or treaters. and. Um, so she was sitting in the, in the, on one of the pews when the police officers came in and they didn't know that she was there and she scared the living crap out of them, <laughs> which was great. Um, and it's always fun because she'll be in the barn giving out candy um, to the trick-or-treaters and I'll fill it up, fill up the candy and then I'll be outside scaring people randomly and people scream and she like loves sitting in there listening to people scream and... <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, there's been many. Um, one of them that I especially liked was it was on a Halloween night and uh, a friend of ours was dressed in a gas mask with a uh, voice changer and he was behind a curtain. And it was early and uh, a young man came in with two girls and he was being very uh, macho with these girls. And I was out, I was out, and um, he was talking about, um, this stuff is so silly. This really doesn't scare me, you know, that I, you know, and these girls are like, oh my gosh, it scares me, you know, I'm really, and that year I had put leaves all over the floor with these squeaky mice underneath the leaves. So if you stepped on them, you know, they'd <laughs> go off. So this young man is continuing, he's telling these girls how brave he is and how he's never, never afraid of this stuff. And the, the friend of ours that had the, the mask on walked out while they were in there. He just walked out and said something. And this voice changer, you know, is not, it was pretty scary. And this boy ran, he ran in place for like, it was, seemed like, you know, like five minutes, this kid is running in place because he can't get out because the leaves are causing him to spin. He fell down, the girls are laughing themselves crazy, and he runs off, runs out down the driveway. And I just thought that was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> but there was a lot of, uh, a lot of that. I, I just enjoy seeing people get scared and scream and run off, I guess. <laughs> there was one night I made a, little, a girl fall down, <laughs> which was great. We had, it was my favorite year. It was um, like Hillbilly Hell was the theme. We have a different theme sort of every year in our mind. And uh, she, the main room had, uh, the candy was in a washing machine and there was a mannequin standing behind it and a stairway and I was in under the stairway and I could see the people coming and I also had an air horn. So people had to go in and get the candy. They didn't know if this thing was gonna move. So I would move and hit the air horn and this girl lost her mind and like flew back and fell down and people, it was, it was incredible. <laughs> it's stuff like that, you just can't, it's priceless. My favorite setup, I like the Victorian funerals a lot. We got this casket, and we'd go to Todd Farm every year and look at all, find all kinds of stuff. And we found a 
child's casket that had a viewing window in it. And that was, you know, like every year there's one thing where you're like, ah, <laughs> like this is it. <laughs> and it makes everything. And so we used that and uh, that was a lot of fun. We also, I really liked, I like things where we get to make a lot of stuff from like the ground up, you know, make a lot of, so we had a crematorium that we completely constructed on our own and measured and taped and we love power tools and like setting everything up and it has to, you know, she's a perfectionist. So she's, because she's an artist, right? There's like this intense attention to detail that I don't have. Um, and I'm always like, it's fine. People aren't going to notice, you know, but she, she cannot let it go. <laughs> like you have to have that one, you know, like the cigarette has to be just right, or there has to be the right amount of cockroaches, or, you know, there has to be like the right amount of bones and the lighting has to be just right. Like it's a whole, it is a real, it's a set. Um, I really also liked one year we did the spider webs. So you had to walk, we made like a tunnel basically, and you had to walk through the spider webs, which is great because we're always looking for ways to kind of get people freaked out without when we're not there. Um, so that's kind of good because you always have like the spider webs to tangle you again, you don't know. One year we had a, a monk, it was a, one of those uh, bone churches made out of the bones of the monks um, because we had gone to Europe and went to one of those and were, thought it was amazing and incredible. So we brought that back and did that one year. Um, and the serial killers, of course. And yeah, just little weird things that we find. And dentists, we did a dental room once that was amazing and so great. Um, she did a birth room once and she's always very, her thing is she's more concerned about, like she doesn't want to offend people, right? So she's very like considerate about what might offend people. And I'm like, it's fine, <laughs> just do it, just do it. Um, so we've come up with some, I tend to like push her a little bit more than she would sometimes go herself, which is cool. I, every year is my favorite year when I'm doing it. <laughs> when I'm in it, I think this is the best thing I've ever done. So um, I think the serial killers last year, I was, I was pretty happy with those guys. That was, that was a really fun for me. Um, you know, I did some research on their crimes and that kind of thing. So it, it was easy to set up and easy to do. It was a little stressful because it's like one of those things that you don't want to, you don't want to go too far with because it's, you shouldn't sensationalize things like that. But at the same time, there's a kind of, most of the people who came here didn't know who they were anyway. So they were just scared by, by these rooms. <laughs> and that's all that really matters, you know, to me. And I'm, I'm happy if they see all the details and all the little things, because to me, those are my jokes. Those are the things I create that are like, you may or may not see this, that somebody's got a cigarette and they're the, you know, housekeeper, babysitter, whatever. And I, and I just find those things funny. So I would put a lot of little detail things in there for people. And hopefully they, some people did see them. You know, we have the guest books that are like filled with what everyone thought. Those are the most, that kept me going longer. I probably wouldn't have done the barn as long as I have if it hadn't been for the guest books because that's where people can say what they think. They draw pictures, the kids send me all kinds of stuff. It's just really a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's a tradition for so many families in the community. And I think it's just great that people let you be a part of that, you know, and that you've become a piece of their family, really, because this is what they bring their friends. I mean, there's a nursing home every year. They call and they bring a busload of their residents and during the day she opens it up for them and they come and walk through the barn and it's just things like that there's exchange students groups of exchange students that come every year um, and yeah it's just like you can't to be able to share that I don't know with people and be a part of their family really Never.
ever could I have imagined that it would turn be this. I mean, it's um, every year we start thinking before Halloween is over, we're already thinking about what's going to be the next theme. And it's just turned into, you know, people from all over. We have guest books and people sign the books um, and write things and notes to us. And there's people from all over the world, you know, people from Belgium and England and uh, Africa that have come and signed the guest books. And it's like, it's, it's awesome to be able to share like Halloween with that many people all over the world. And this community has been so supportive and so kind and just so respectful. I think that's the most important part. Every child, every adult that's been out here has been so genuinely good, you know? Not destroying things or, or any, they just come for the sheer fun of it, which is what it was meant to be, just fun for kids and parents in a safe place where they're not gonna to have to worry about somebody getting, hurting them or scaring them too badly, you know. <laughs> I have no actors, that's why. <laughs> when she announced that she wasn't gonna do it this year, I mean, people were like, what about Fluffy? What are you gonna do with Fluffy? What's happening to Fluffy? Uh, so, and he's, yeah, he's getting ready to retire. But, you know, and it, it's funny because we talk about what are you gonna do with all this stuff? Because it's, building you know it's it's the barn it's the basement it's the garage i mean it's under the barn it's in the back of the barn it's a lot and uh so we are like what is going to happen to all this stuff and you just you think about like letting it go and then you're like but i can't <laughs> what if i want you know so it's funny i just went out and opened the barn up this past weekend for the first time since uh last year really and i was like oh you know, you're talking to everybody and <laughs> it's, it's crazy. So when we look at the impact that the haunted barn has made on folks here in the seacoast and beyond, it's really incredible. I was amazed and delighted to take a look at all of the books over the years with signatures and comments and postcards and how much people really enjoy The Haunted Barn. And you got a great idea of how that rippled out when the news came down about The Haunted Barn closing. Everybody was talking about it on social media and of course in putting together this piece we put a call out to our local community for memories and commentary about what the haunted barn meant to them and I was overwhelmed. People were stopping and dropping off family photos and inspiration and make sure that this message gets back to the team behind the haunted barn. You could see that this was a place that wasn't just a place to have a scary good time, but it was a place where the community met and got together for the evening and shared stories and really enjoyed themselves. And they got to make the most of having their Halloween with a great backdrop. And I have to tell you, if you missed the Halloween parade a few years ago, it was Diana that was the Grand Marshal. Who could ever forget that she was up on that pile of logs, tied to a stake like a burning witch of old, going through the streets of Portsmouth. That was one of the most incredible memories that I have of seeing the woman behind the scenes. So when we look at the community and beyond, of course, the outpouring of love and consideration for all of the work that has gone into this is evident in all of the memories that people have been sharing of it and just the appreciation for the creativity which I too am such a great appreciation for everything that went into did you see those antiques all of those amazing things that were collected over the years to really make this a place that was memorable and scary all at the same time and I think people really understood I've heard that even up until recently, people were dropping things off to be props there. Sometimes they tuck them into little corners. So everybody wanted to be involved. And that just really tells us what a wonderful and creative Seacoast community we have. And when it's things like this that bring everybody together, of course they're going to be sorely missed. Well, I'm just, I'm trying 
to uh, reconcile the fact that this is not going to be happening and I have to, I need to walk away from it. So um, I, st you know, I have all these good memories. I have wonderful guest books and pictures and CDs of every, I mean, photographers came and, and uh, I documented every year. So I have all those things and um, I guess I'm just gonna have to get used to it. So I was trying to make it to 70 but I'm 69, so I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> it's just, the work is just too hard. And I need to say too, that I had so many offers of, from people to help me. And it, it's, not, it's not that, it's, um, I can't really explain it, but I have, when I have the pictures uh, and the details of how I wanna do something, I can't really explain to someone else how to do that. That, that takes more time than for me just to do it. So I, it's, it's not that I wasn't offered the help, I was. I just, I couldn't explain it to produce the work I really wanted. So it's not really, I think a lot of people think of it as decorating, but it's actual physical hard work. It's building things. I mean, I make everything out of house insulation, almost everything. You know, and then the graveyard that became a separate, a whole another scene. And I have more extension cords than Home Depot. I can assure you, I do, um, because it's you have to run all the electricity to all of these things, and it has to be safe. Um, you know, I've never had a problem with the city or anything like that. They've always been wonderful uh, about what's going on out here. So. Um, I don't know, it's just, uh, it's just time that, um, you know, for me to let it go. I mean, I think it's a great, it's a terrible loss, right? I mean, I think. It breaks, like, I, it makes me, like, teary. We cry about it all the time, and like, we feel like we're dying. <laughs> um, but it's, as far as the community goes, like, I feel like when I look around Portsmouth, I see more and more, like, Halloween awesomeness, and I love it. Like, it's... And I feel like she's had a huge part in making that happen. I mean, there are people now, the next door neighbors have the spider, right? And then two houses down, they have their little graveyard that they set up and they make their whole little thing and it's getting a little bit bigger every year. And the guy on the other, down the other way has a huge spider and display and, you know, he does a whole Halloween party and it's, I just feel like she's, I was just saying, like, it's, you had something to do with that. Like, I was telling her that, that, that she has inspired that in people, I think. It's funny because she's obsessed with it. Like, she can't, someone asked her if she was going to do a Christmas, maybe Christmas like this. And she was like, Abs like, no. <laughs> Have you seen my Christmas displays? Right? Because even now at Christmas, the past few years, she'll do, you know, like the little um, skeletons on the Christmas tree out front. Or she just can't help herself. And it, it's funny because I was saying... You know, as she's getting older and she's doing it on her own and I'm here and it's difficult for me to get back as often and John and Carol are busy and I come home and she's on like the top rung of a ladder with like, you know, an electric saw or a, an electric staple gun trying to like staple something like, oh, and I'm like, you're gonna, I told her, you're going to die in here and I'm just going to leave you and open it up next year <laughs> and it's going to be the grand finale. Like... <laughs> Because <laughs> that's this is crazy. You have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've been struggling between doing that and doing the barn, and uh, I really it's a time in my life when I need to focus on my work, and and produce some some meaningful pieces. So that's what I'll be doing. Um, I mean, I feel like I want people to just celebrate it, you know, this year and. It's funny because even, and just think, like, remember that this is the community that you're in, you know? It's um, like when, in like, I think 2013 was the year that we had, um, it was the first year. People never, that's the other amazing thing about this, right? People never steal anything. People never touch anything. People leave things for her all the time. They once, 
someone left her a pottery skull, like a ceramic skull. And another year, you know, we'll find like dentures someone's left. <laughs> You know, just like really odd little things. And it's funny because it's almost like them communicating with us because they'll put them somewhere in the barn. And we go out every day or every night and we turn it on and we look around and we refill the smoke machine and we turn on all the stuff. And you guys are like, wait, what? Like that wasn't, <laughs> how did that get there, right? <laughs> um, anyway, so. I just, and it's like, this is theirs, really. As much as we love it, we love it because they have made it what it is. You know, because if people didn't come, we probably, it wouldn't be any fun, you know? So, I don't know. I just think it's, people need to remember that this is like the community and what it's all about. Because I think especially with Portsmouth growing like it is, it's easy to lose sight of the community piece. So, anyway, <laughs> now it's making me kind of emotional. It, it just brings your whole, um, you know, your whole feelings about humanity and about, you know, how we treat each other, you know, up to the front because here's this entire community. They've been nothing but supportive and kind and wonderful. They enjoy this as much as I enjoy it. And I, and I just appreciate them all. I appreciate everything they did. I appreciate how the kids behaved and, and I know they appreciated everything back. So we have a kind of a, a mutual connection. Even though I may not know your face, you know, I, I, I know that there is a group of people out there who, who loved this and that meant everything. That's the way it should have been. So, so many great memories of the haunted barn. And Diana is off to her next creative adventure. And we are so grateful. And speaking for myself personally, I have so many wonderful memories of the haunted barn that I won't soon forget. So many pictures and so many good times. And for any of you that are thinking about perhaps lighting the way for your trick-or-treaters and the folks that you want to scare in your neighborhood, Get out there on your porches, start decorating those driveways. I know I have a few gravestones in my front yard as well as my back. Bring that creativity right out there into the community. Remember, she started out just by decorating her porch. And sometimes it's those little bits of inspiration and creativity that really bring the community together and they grow to be these big, wondrous, scary things. So I invite you, take up that torch and make this happen. Let's keep the scariness going as we look forward to many more Octobers. And of course, you may have already noticed right out there on Middle Road, there are a few more other spooky things popping up along the side of the road. So you can continue that throughout the entire town. I, of course, would like to thank Diana for all the years and to thank each and every one of you for watching this and having some interest in that haunted barn and for sharing your memories and your photos. This has just been such a wonderful experience to look behind the veil at what it took to make all this happen. And Seacoast community and beyond, you're out there thinking about more wonderful Halloween stuff, go and make it happen and make sure that in the process, you're always having a scary good time.